Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada News Megs on the broadcast today. Fasten your seat belts. Our guest is Robert Lang. He's director of the Lindsay Institute and Brookings Mountain West. He's here for the whole show on an all new Nevada Newsmakers. Like a traditional handmade basket, retail is woven into the fabric of life in Nevada. From big box to mom and pop, retail supports our communities in countless ways. Jobs for the disabled, team uniforms for kids, help for the elderly, and so much more. Retail employs over 1 in 10 workers. Retail supports Nevada, and we support retail. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Pro Group Management offers workers' comp services to a growing number of industries. As businesses grow and change with the times, the need for a solid workers' comp program must be flexible and up-to-date. The evolving nature of regulations can make staying ahead of complex tasks challenging. But Pro Group Management simplifies the work so your industry can move forward and succeed. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Truck drivers are some of the hardest working people you'll meet delivering over 70% of America's freight and 92% of Nevada's. When there's a natural disaster, they're delivering critical supplies to help those communities recover and rebuild. Every sector of the economy and our nation's military rely on truck drivers. So let's take a moment to say thank you. On the open road or city streets, our truck drivers are rolling to make our economy and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no holds barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're always pleased to welcome back to the program Robert Lang. He is director of the Lindsay Institute and a director of Brookings Mountain West. Pleasure to have you back on the program, sir. Thanks for having me. Um, so let's start out with j just give me your thoughts on where we are with COVID at this point, five months in. Um, we're one of the most affected states, and the reason is that Las Vegas's uh, tourist economy is especially affected. I mean, you've seen uh, MGM lay off 18,000 workers. Most of those, of those are in Las Vegas. You know, they're spread throughout the country and the world, but, uh, you know, most of them are in Las Vegas. What, what's really troubling for Las Vegas at the moment is that one of the things Las Vegas did to diversify was diversified within its core sector of tourism and has been tremendously successful in areas like live entertainment, nightclubs, and then most recently sports. And, and sports in Las Vegas is different than sports in Seattle. You know, they sell planes and software in Seattle. What Las Vegas was selling with sports is that a large share of people attending sporting events in Las Vegas were gonna be out from outside the region you know, just looking at the Pac-12 is contracted to use the stadium for their championship game. So, you know, you were going to have USC and Washington and places like that in our, in our stadium with everyone virtually coming from outside the state. So all of this assumed, and what, it's, what Vegas's real specialty was, and the convention trade was booming too, was face-to-face -face interactions. People were crowded in sporting events, in entertainment, in conventions and actually las vegas is the leading venue in the united states of face-to-face -face exchange you know people meeting at conventions for the first time build trust with one another and that forms the basis for future business exchanges so las vegas had a, a distinct competitive advantage in being able to put the most people for furniture shows for consumer electronics for any kind of event it had the best ability to put the multiple you know numbers the high numbers of people in one place while they're proximate to one another. And that's what's the most threatened by COVID. Well, you know, I, I mean, it's interesting you use the phrase diversification because yes, you're absolutely correct. It was diversifying within an industry, but in terms of actual real diversification away from gaming, tourism, et cetera, um, really it's been minimal by comparison with the size of the gaming slash entertainment complex. Um, so, is one of the first lessons that we learn for Las Vegas is that it really has to diversify into other industries um, to be able to make this work. Yes, and it was doing well outside too. 
it's people don't realize that it's still a larger technology sector than Reno. It's just that Reno has a higher percentage. But more importantly, business services, you know, which is the heart of large metropolitan areas above 2 million, was booming. And Las Vegas does business services at approximately the share that you'd predict a region its size would do. It was doing better in logistics. The sad thing is, you know, one true area of diversification was the film tax credits. And what Atlanta's done with that is amazing. Atlanta got into trouble recently with that because its legislature passed a fetal heartbeat bill and Hollywood did not like it. It's something that Las Vegas is unlikely to do. But those uh, film tax credits were swept for the Tesla deal. So Las Vegas always had a competitive advantage in filmed entertainment is actually related to live entertainment. And you don't have to be there for, for filmed entertainment, for television and motion picture production, you do not need the audience proximate. You do for something like live entertainment on the strip. So it's a shame that Las Vegas, one of the, one of the avenues it had cut off to it was, was film and television production, which I believe it would have thrived in so much so that I was the one that actually inserted that into the 2011 State Economic Development Plan that was done for Governor Sandoval and Aaron Ford, the current uh, uh, Attorney General of Nevada, was the sponsor for the bill for it. I think you could have done Tesla and the film tax credits, quite frankly. I didn't think you needed to make a zero sum game out of that. We fought for it, but go ahead and insisted on sweeping the film tax credits. So some of the tools we would have had for economic diversification, not even extending the core, but playing off the core because it still has the region, Las Vegas, still has a competitive advantage in it. We lost that opportunity. Um, well, first of all, um, you need Tyler Perry's uh, cell phone number so you can get him interested in what may, we may be able to offer him. But let me ask you this on a more serious note. Um, you know, there's always a great debate about incentives. Um, and a lot of folks are for them. A lot of folks are against them. How do you feel about that? Because it seems to me that this is such a competitive thing to get these large industries to move. Um, and we have seen a boom, uh, certainly in northern Nevada, which I know you're not the biggest fan of. Um, but, um, you know, should we continue to look at incentives or are those out the door? I think they're going away. And one of the shocks to the system was the deals done for not just Tesla, but for Amazon. Amazon basically turned to the whole country and took them down a garden path where they produced copious amounts of documentation for, uh, you know, for, hey, come to, you know, fill in the blank. Uh, and, and sort of, by the way, at this point, Amazon must have the world's leading or at least the leading US knowledge in every incentive and every location because it was solicited by so many different cities for its headquarters two location, which ultimately New York, which rejected it for, you know, the first sort of wouldn't do the, the deal and Amazon withdrew and then put everything into, into Northern Virginia from what I understand is still considering a New York office in Hudson Yards. Now, going back to my criticism in the state, my problem incentives in this state is that Las Vegas generates the majority of the tax base, which would allow you to offer incentives. In other words, you have to, to abate a tax, you have to have had a lot of taxes in the first place. Las Vegas produces uh, more than even its share of the population, which is, is 75% of the state's population. From go, it had only received, according to data from Ryan Juden and myself, during the Sandoval years. So from you know, 11, really 12, to like 18, Las Vegas only got 23% of that. Story County got 66%, and the North got basically three quarters. Like, it's really easy to diversify your economy when you have an entire state of three plus million and a metropolitan area of 2.3 million pumping the money in. Man, you know, the, you, I didn't see any Dakotas bidding on Tesla without, without Las Vegas, without as a Dakota. It's got what, 800,000 people, the biggest cities, Reno? It wouldn't have been in the game. Idaho wasn't even in the game. So, you know, you needed Las Vegas to leverage that and then it's invested several hundred miles away in a county that's got 4,200 residents and is 92% white. And you gave a county with 2.3 million people, which is, which is majority minority, who had worked to produce the capacity to offer such an abatement, 23%. All these kids 
whose parents have been working in the gaming industry, whose parents want them to have uh, you know, alternative opportunities to gaming, everybody in culinary who's been working, they did provide that opportunity 400 miles away. Don't even get me started on what's happened in the public investment between the two universities. You know, Las Vegas gets an engineering, bill canc uh, engineering building canceled and we get sent the bill and, and Reno gets an engineering bill and the state's picking up the, the bond for it. We had to go to a medical school for a, you know, five, you know, a, a nonprofit, which I was part of. Thank God that the Brookings Institution thought of that deal. Or there wouldn't be a medical school building under construction in Las Vegas right now. Las Vegas is on its own. And I've written a whole book with colleagues, David Damore and Karen Danielson called Blue Metros, Red States. Vegas ain't alone, man. You see what they do to Charlotte. It's all about how the bluest metros that are 1 million plus keep producing excessive amounts of revenue for states. And then those states fail to return the majority of that revenue to the biggest metros for their own economic development, infrastructure investment, social services, education, and so on. And it's a phenomena around the country. But Las Vegas is an exemplary case. All right. So fair enough. Those are the numbers. Um, but let's throw out infrastructure. Um, the infrastructure was in place for Northern Nevada. Um, Tesla had come to Las Vegas and turned it down. They were not looking at Northern Nevada. Um, the owners of the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, along with the Reno Airport, were planning to charter a plane for $10,000 uh, to fly Tesla executives up. They turned that down, but they were curious to see why somebody from Northern Nevada would want to invest even that kind of money to fly them up there. They came up there, they saw that they could get a grading permit on the same day, L lack of overbearing regulations, infrastructure already in place, power, sewage, you name it, it was all there. I, I mean, you know, we have not seen that kind of investment in infrastructure in Southern Nevada, you know, Apex being the shining example of that. And, and there, that's not the way the mayor of North Las Vegas and Ryan Juden tell it. I'll just, why don't you get them on the show and ask them? Well, about hang on a sec. Okay, so hang on a second. I will, I will answer that because Ryan Juden has been on the show and so is Mayor Lee. And Ryan Juden said on the program uh, that one of the things that they had done in the city of North Las Vegas was try to emulate a lot of the ways that the permitting was done in Story County because it is so onerous in other major areas in the state. Uh, my suggestion, by the way. So yes, kudos to Story County for being positioned to do that. Uh, okay, after you do that deal, maybe you don't do stuff like this. Hey, switch communications. You're asking for a significant reduction in your, uh, in your retail sales because you're a co-located facility and people are going ahead and having to buy servers in Las Vegas and pay, you know, 8.25% in, you know, in uh, taxes on a device that keeps wearing out, all right? So when Switch comes to the state, it says, look, well, you know, Phoenix is looking to do this, you know, to give us a giant tax incentive to come there. We're under pressure to diversify within the Las Vegas Valley, okay? And so we're willing to do maybe Boulder City or North Las Vegas as a secondary site because everybody doesn't want all our eggs in one basket. They're told the only deal they can make with this state is you have to move the largest facility in the world up to Reno to do that, where you have pulverizing earthquakes, where we wrote in the 2011 uh, you know, economic development report, and this is with SRI, that there was no competitive advantage in Northern Nevada to do that, yet all the competitive advantage existed in Southern Nevada to do that. Even the Enron Corporation before it went out of business knew that. And then we're told that the one business, the one sector that's really seeding, succeeding in Southern Nevada, data hosting, we have to share that with Reno? I mean, it wasn't another state that you took it from. Reno, Brookings has no history of an individual firm being solicited within a state. No one told Boeing, hey, we'll give you a deal to do the 787s in Seattle. You gotta do the airframes out in Spokane. I mean, you know, fine. If, you, if you're gonna do a big deal in Tesla, you might wanna put your focus on Las Vegas and not poach a business. Switch was poached from Las Vegas through an incentive that required a number of jobs be in Reno or the incentive wouldn't kick in. I brought that back to the Brookings Institution in Washington. They never seen anything like that. That's a one-off. So yeah, 
I, you know, I can make many, many other cases for infrastructure investment, higher ed. You needed the seventh engineering building at UNR. We, we have our robotics lab in the back of a 99 cent store. We weren't getting a building and we're still not getting a building. And we're told by Andrew Klinger that we have bad timing and bad luck. That ain't bad timing and bad luck. That's a, a system that systematically produces greater public investment in a state, in a part of a state that has a much larger white population and much na larger native born to the state population than Southern Nevada, which is not only uh, actually the leading place for minorities that has, you know, something like 90% of foreign born and 90% of African Americans, but is also the leading tax generator. Hey, there's a t-shirt there's a kids walk around with on the UNR campus. And you know what it says? It says, make Nevada great again. And then it shows a wall across, across Southern Nevada and it says, build the wall. Yeah, build that wall and you cut off most of your taxes, build that wall and you cut off most of your diversity. So would make Nevada great again to be reduced 90 something percent of the minority composition of the state? That's what kids are wearing at UNR. We're doing an op-ed that's coming out next week in the sun that actually shows that t-shirt. Cut Nevada off, cut Southern Nevada off, build a wall. You'll remember that we had a legislator that once wanted to turn us into a district in 2015. So yeah, from our perspective, from where I sit, you know, uh, it, it is something of a disparity as far as public investment. All right, let's take a break. We'll come back with more with Robert Lang after this timeout. Things are heating up at the Carson Valley Inn. Win your share of $200,000 through September 26th. Cash and free play every weekend, plus five times points Fridays. The good times are at CVI. I can't do it. Stupid, like my mom. We can't do anything at Mommy's because you won't pay child support. Dad said you cheated, and he's not even sure he's my dad. Mommy said you left both of us, so she isn't going to let me see you. I look just like my father. I'm divorce attorney Marilyn York, and I may represent men, but hate has no gender, only casualties. Please, stop sacrificing your children in your war against your ex. Because of UMC, I'm putting my free time to good use. Because of UMC, she keeps me on my toes. Because of UMC and this guy, I'm here. UMC, the highest level of care in Nevada. Are you learning? This place is great. Huh? You gotta try this. Wow! This stuff is great! People are gonna love it! Yes. Yes, they will. Things are heating up at the Carson Valley Inn. Win your share of $200,000 through September 26th. Cash and free play every weekend, plus five times points Fridays. The good times are at CVI. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Robert Lang. He's the director of both the Lindsay Institute and Brookings Mountain West. Okay, so let's deal with some of these issues. So, um, you know, with, with the switch deal, for example, who, who do you uh, lay the blame at for that, that incentive being passed to go to Northern Nevada instead of Southern Nevada? The well, switch deal is interesting because, you know, a company like that will go along with a deal in, in a case where you've got a very high burden on firms on especially retail sales taxes, because what's, what's troubling in the sort of server sector, if you will, is that the equipment wears out very quickly. So if you think about a capital purchase in that sector, there's a lot of incentive. You can say to them, we could relieve you for 75% of that deal by, you know, uh, by a, a sort of an abatement to you. And because we're recognizing that you have to replace the equipment like once every 24 to 30 months. So, you know, fine. So Phoenix wants to go ahead to switch and make that offer and switch is under pressure for it having to sort of diversify the locations within Las Vegas. 
And when it approaches the state, from what I'm told, GOED in particular, in the governor's office, and you know, in, in, in general, not just the GOED office, but the governor's office, are very hot to build uh, data hosting in Reno. And again, Reno didn't have a natural advantage in data hosting because of several elements, including just natural hazards of earthquakes, for example. Vegas has earthquakes, but they're light in relative terms. So all the original competitive advantage that's identified in business ecosystems and data hosting in the 2011 report is Las Vegas. And all you would have had to do is say, all right, you could do a site in Boulder, and that's 15 miles away from the original site. But Switch is told, hey, if you want this incentive, and this center is golden, you're going to have to put some share of your total operations in Northern Nevada. Now, a business is mostly going to be compliant to that because they're going to take the extra costs of going further away because the incentive to not just switch, it's not really switch, it's that switch is hosting firms who are buying the servers, who are suddenly paying you know, 2% for sales tax instead of 8% for sales tax. And it puts, puts co-hosting facilities in Nevada at a competitive advantage. So you know, that's a case where you, it's, it's inexorable. You know, you sort of, you know, it's just too attractive to a firm. You want us to put a, you know, you want us to put a hundred jobs up in Reno. You want us to build a, a largest data facility up there. Fine. So we get the incentives down in Vegas as well. Cause okay, talking, Robert, if, you go, Robert, if you go to Las Vegas, if you go to Phoenix, you don't get that. Yeah. Okay. Robert. So, so go back to my question, which is who, who do you lay the blame at the feet of? Is it Brian Sandoval? Was it Steve Hill at GoEd? I mean, you know, you're saying that, that, that this was done to promote Reno. Collectively, I don't know, you know, if I would pick on one individual specifically, I think it's structural. I think it's just an assumption of, hey, let's just grab this and have some, some of this kind of industry in, in Reno as well. And this is, you know, after this really sort of, you know, switch deals and things like that. This is a- Okay, we got it, we got it. Okay. Okay, we got to take another break here. We'll be right back. Dimitri Prine here for Design Outdoor. Come visit Design Outdoor's store and backyard to see our wide selection of fire pits, barbecues, and pizza ovens, natural stone water features, and fountains, and frost-proof pottery. Our store and backyard are located at 11600 South Virginia, just north of DeMonte Ranch Parkway. Visit designoutdoor.com or call us at 851-9499. I can't do it. Stupid, like my mom. We can't do anything at Mommy's because you won't pay child support. Dad said you cheated, and he's not even sure he's my dad. Mommy said you left both of us, so she isn't going to let me see you. I look just like my father. I'm divorce attorney Marilyn York, and I may represent men, but hate has no gender, only casualties. Please, stop sacrificing your children in your war against your ex. Hi, I'm Dave Newman. Remember me? I used to be the house detective, and now I'm a realtor, full-time at REMAX Realty Affiliates. A lot of people ask me, how's the market? You know what? It's fantastic. If you're even kicking around the idea of buying or selling, give me a call. Let's talk about it. Call me at REMAX Realty Affiliates and just ask for the guy who used to be the house detective, Dave Newman. Everyone is talking about opioids, but they're not the only drugs that can be harmful if taken in large quantities or not as prescribed. You also need to be aware of side effects from anxiety drugs, muscle relaxants, sleep aids, and stimulants. Mixing prescription drugs with other drugs or alcohol can be dangerous. If you take Ambien with a glass of wine, it may be enough to stop you from breathing. Prescribed drugs can be just as dangerous as illegal drugs. Take medications only as directed. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Robert Lang. He's director of both the Lindsay Institute and Brookings Mountain West, located in Las Vegas. Okay, you made an accusation that's pretty darn strong that the two of the reasons um, for all this location in northern Nevada rather than southern Nevada was um, a white population and a native-born population. Seriously? Oh, well, you know, that's, again, interestingly enough, that's not uncommon around the country. In other words, the, the most diverse and large-scale metropolitan areas, like Charlotte, for example, 
uh, often see assets that would have been spent in, in Charlotte and road construction from, you know, we, again, I'll go back to the book, Blue Metro's Red States. And it's about the urban rural divide in 13 of the uh, uh, swing states that were swing states in, in 2016 and 27 large metros. And there are metros around the country, not dissimilar to Las Vegas, where the state government apparatus is set up to, to like under provide anything near what, this, what is contributed by that metropolitan area. Uh, and, you know, I suggest your readers buy the book if they want to see Las Vegas in that context. But it's not uncommon that those regions are the most diverse and that the parts of the state that are the recipients of tremendous largesse that's generated by a tax share from big metros tend to be less diverse. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So, so I, I, and I appreciate your, your last comment there. Um, we're out of time. Uh, when the book comes out and you're saying it's going to be out here in the next few weeks. October 6th. Okay. So, so come back October 6th uh, or around that date and let's talk further because you've raised a lot of important issues. We have tons more topics to get to, uh, but I think they're very important issues and it's always a pleasure to have you on the program, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll be right back. A bird's eye captures its surroundings at different heights. At Brian Culp of Photography, we can make your imagination soar over buildings, parks, cityscapes, and beyond. Brian's images tell the story and get the job done. If you need a new perspective to tell your story, contact Brian today. Brian Culp of Photography. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Hi, my name's Marilyn Miner, and I'm sure you'd agree that Nevada's a very special place to live. I was born here, and my husband and I have raised our family here. I feel it's a privilege to live and work in the Truckee Meadows. I especially enjoy helping my clients reach their real estate goals. Sometimes the smallest details provide the greatest satisfaction. I'd be complimented to talk to you about your next move. Call Marilyn Miner at Dixon Realty, 742-1280, or log on to MarilynMiner.com. Safety. We all think about it. You think about it when he buckles in, when you check your mirrors and put away your phone. RTC thinks about safety too. In fact, we create it. Center turn lanes mean fewer blind spots. Bike lanes keep cyclists and you safe. Roundabouts reduce injury collisions. And all these crosswalks are designed to keep families like yours safe. Safety is your priority and it's ours too. Every day in everything we do. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. You can now watch Nevada Newsmakers on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and search for Nevada Newsmakers and become a subscriber. We'll see you on the next broadcast. Thanks for watching and listening.